Okay, for lab practical three, this is a section about platyhelminthes, which are also uh, known as the flatworms. And that's because they're quite um, flat, um, dorsoventrally, belly back, they're, they're um, kind of squished together in that direction. They are, you know, because they're like that, so, so squished, they don't have any space in their bodies, no body cavity, they're acelomate. Uh, mostly I'm just worried that you understand that platyhelminthes are, is the phylum, so know how to spell that. And um, that these are the classes, and then who belongs to the classes. So we'll go through the classes together. The first class we'll start with is called Turbolaria. See, it's this one here. Turbolaria is going to be um, including planaria. That's the most common known type. Uh, that's a common name. The planaria, Dugasia is what its genus is. But if you know planaria is a turbolaria, that will be good. This is a stained picture. They're not really pink and they can't really see their gastrovascular cavity that much. I, I just took two pictures and put it together. He's actually even longer than this. But um, what you can see is a number of features. They are going to um, not be parasitic. So they're, they're what we call free living. The turbolarias are. Uh, they live in at least the planaria. They live in fresh water. And these are going to be carnivores, but they don't um, they're not parasitic. Like I said, they are scavengers or hunters. And there's some different features you need to notice about this planarian. Uh, it's starting at the interior. We have um, these little pokeyati parts that look like ears, potentially. We call those auricles. But they are not ears. The auricles, A-U-R-I-C-L-E, they are used for sensing um, molecules, like chem different chemicals. So that would be like our sense of smell. So their little auricles can detect smells. Uh, and then their other type of sensory organ is going to be these little spots. These here, these are actually the photoreceptors of the black parts you see. I'll show you. Here. So you can see the photoreceptors. This is what it really looks like. Uh, and then the white part is actually the eye spots. And it really does look like a little cartoon, a cross-eyed cartoon. So the eye spots are the, the white and the black tissue, and the photoreceptor itself is the black tissue, and that is light sensitive. It doesn't see a picture like our eyes do, but it does can detect when there is light, when there's not. And basically what happens with these planaria is when they detect light, they tend to swim away from it. Because it's probably less likely to get eaten if it's not bright out see here as well, eye spots, photoreceptors. Uh, all this, this kind of um, yellow orange, and here it's kind of a light brown, and here it's black. That's all gastrovascular cavity. You can see it's highly branched, good for exchange across the surface because lots of surface area, because remember this GV cavity is going to be acting for digestion as well as for circulation, meaning distributing nutrients throughout the body. And then we have this empty part here. There's no gastrovascular cavity because that's actually the pharynx. So you can see it's attached right here and it would actually flop out. It'd be like this tube for a mouth. This is its mouth anus. The end of it's there. And then the tube is the pharynx and then it goes into the gastrovascular cavity and gets just, just digested and distributed. So you could oops, see that as well. This kind of thing is the pharynx part. This. And so that's its feeding. That's how it feeds. The mouth is not by the anterior, actually. It's on the, the, the ventral, um, most mid section of the animal. And uh, one hole in and out, gastrovascular cavities. That's how they work. They have one in and one out. And um, what else? 
this planaria um, yeah I think that's basically it turbolaria they can regenerate if you cut them you do that in class so you can cut them up or they can pull themselves in half and or little parts to pull up a part of their tail and it makes a whole new planarian but they also sexually reproduce some parts of the year as well okay in the platyhelminthes, the flatworms, we also have cestoidea is the class. Back here. This gives you a nice picture of the kind of orientation of all these parts. And here's the whole tapeworm. That's what cestoidea include tapeworms. That's tapeworm is the regular old name for this organism. And so at one end of the tapeworm, in the class cestoidea, Phylum platyhelminthes is like its anterior end is going to be what we call the scolex. So oops, that would be like this end here. And it corresponds with this. And so the scolex, there's basically this. <laughs> tapeworms have like two functions that they do they hang on to their the intestine of the mammal they're in, and then they make more tapeworms. So this part here is base is for hanging on. So it has hooks as well as suckers. Uh, no mouth though. This is not. There's not like suckers as in little entrances into the body. They're they're like suction cups and then the hooks and that all allows it to um, attach itself onto the intestine uh, inside the mammal and um, not get excreted. And then as we move more posteriorly down the body, we get to this part here which is um, these little segments. They are immature, what we call proglottids. Proglottid is going to be this big guy here. But these are immature ones. You can't see much structures inside of them. And you can see that. Uh, well, that's a mature one. But the immature ones, not a lot of much structure. The ones we're more concerned about are the mature proglottids, which have all the sex organs in them. So I think, I mean, there's the vagina and the uterus, there's um, testes, there's all kinds of reproductive organs. So you don't need to know where each little part is. You'll just need to know that these are the sex organs or the reproductive organs are like full. The, the proglottid is full of those. It's a little sack full of reproductive organs. So when you look at the tapeworm as a whole, what it does is it hangs on and it reproduces. And that's about it. It uh, doesn't have any digestive system. doesn't have any really sensory organs. Uh, the digestion, digestion happens because it absorbs the already digested food from the mammal's uh, intestine across its, its cell wall or um, cell membranes into its cells. So it doesn't even digest its own food. So those little proglottids are all those little sort of segmenty parts. So that is going to be your cestoidea, your tapeworm, flatworm in the class or the phylum of platyhelminthes. And then we come to our last group called trematodes or trematoda class in the platyhelminth phyl phylum. Um, the common name for this guy is a fluke. There can be liver flukes or blood flukes. Um, but fluke is the general name for this type of flatworm. Um, I couldn't figure out where the, these uh, suckers were, which I know I said for you to label on your uh, drawings, so you don't have to label that. Um, basically what I can find out and what most of the internal structures are devoted to, just like the flatworm, because these guys are also parasites, is really to reproduction. So all these are eggs in here, so it's a cavity full of uh, reproductive structures again. Uh, it lives in, this one lives in liver, the human liver. There are other ones that live like in the bloodstreams. They make mass quantities of eggs, I found out. 4,000 eggs over uh, day, a day for up to six months. 
and I wanted to point out that this is true on, on like some of the other slides too, that it looks like a hole, like a, like a vesicle or something, but really it's a tube. And you could imagine if you cut a tube and you look down on the top of it, it looks like um, an empty ring, right? But really it's a tube, but you just took a section. So this is like a section through the animal. And that's why this is not all one sac too. I don't think it's a bunch of little uteri. I think the uteri has, the uterus have, uh, has a structure to it to where you cut it and then you see uh, only parts of that. that. Um, so with these guys, the flukes, sorry, let me pull this up. Uh, they have a life cycle that, that alternates between two hosts. So one host is, is our humans and the other host is going to be a snail in this case. There we are. Okay, so this is going to be the, the life cycle. Um, this is, like we said, the trematodes. And uh, it has the host it infects uh, and, and causes damage to as the human, but then it has to actually go through a snail intermediate. So it's, it's excreted the, through, through the feces. And if you had little larvae in the water, it has to be in water, uh, and a person goes exposed to the larvae, the ciliated version, uh, it wouldn't matter. Now, the ciliated version actually has to get inside a, a specific types of snail, specific species. And then it doesn't hurt them. Um, and then it comes out as a different type of larvae. And that is what can get and go across uh, human cell membranes and get into humans. So it has to have that intermediate host or else it can't, it's not infectious. But um, the snail is the one that works with this, at least the schistoma, uh, schistosoma mansoni, because of schistomiasis, which you might be writing about for your essays. But that's a blood fluke, a fluke. Okay. I think that's what I have for flatworms. So there's three classes. Who's in each class? Basic body parts, the more complicated ones for the planaria and the turbillaria, but pretty much hooks, suckers, and proglotted sex organs. And uh, we also just have a lot of reproductive structures inside of here as well.